Jeff Perry, scandal has just completely exploded over the last, say, 12 months. What has been the reaction to you on the street? You know, in airports and family and old high school buddies and whatever, it's uh, a lot of joy. Um, people getting kind of addicted to the show. Shonda had us over to her house to watch prior to airing uh, maybe the first three episodes. This is, I don't know what this was, a year and a half ago. Yeah. And we we, we just watched and, you know, uh, um, really quite entranced and so many impressions from then of Shonda 11 years into her TV career or so um, kind of trying on an absolutely new political thriller genre and being amazing at it. Uh, I'm biased, but uh, you know, marrying all her wonderful skills of, of writing beautifully for um, relationships, um, of grounding things like she does in Grey's Anatomy. Uh, um, and at the same time, kind of, you know, 17 uh, um, adrenaline that feels, uh, I told it feels like Greek and sh the Greeks and Shakespeare, you know, meet telenovela and uh, uh, everything in between. And it's, a, it's just a really fun mix uh, of, of elements that she's created. As, as, as you can tell by watching a little bit, uh, I'm the recipient of this gorgeous relationship writing, gorgeous monologue writing. Kerry Washington teased her at a recent table read and said, Shonda, you, 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 you've really kind of cooked your goose. Um, college kids are going to be doing your monologues from this TV series. Uh, um, and until casting directors can't stand it anymore. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. That's nice. It's, you know, that's, um, st well, let's stick with Shonda for a moment. You've worked with her before. Obviously, one of your most memorable roles is playing Meredith's dad on Grey's Anatomy. Um, now you're working on, obviously, Scandal, a very different show, different character. What, um, what is, what is it like to work with her? Is she, um, is she very collaborative in her, in the process or is, do you really read it verbatim of, of what she's put on the page? The answer is kind of simultaneously yes to both of your questions. Um, she is uh, a, a, a beautiful and prodigious wordsmith. Um, we honor her writing um, kind of to, to the letter. And simultaneously, she's really open to kind of this little thing doesn't make sense to me. I don't know um, quite how to play it. Uh, um, and it's, it's, that, it's that kind of dialogue where there will be a beautiful kind of uh, um, explanation of here's the intent of it, here's why I wrote it, all the way to um, oh, wow. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, <laughs> I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. And within about a day, there's some gorgeous solution usually. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. I think that's a very, very cool thing to have for a showrunner. Um, you know, Cyrus is the favorite of a lot of people on the show. A lot of viewers, I mean. Um, people love him. Um, what do you think it is about Cyrus that people warm to? I think Sean has captured something in this character and I kind of consider it ensemble wide in, in the, the, the qualities, these, these qualities I'm about to describe of, um, just very authentic dichotomy in these, the wiring of these humans. Mm -hmm. I can be as duplicitous and strategic and situational 
ethics a person as you would ever find um, and can be really faithful and loyal and incredibly protective of those I love and very idealistic mm -hmm. and then suddenly um, as jaded as the worst politician or reporter <laughs> in, in a, in a, uh, no aspersions to you man huh? um, and, and uh, you know and I think it's I think it's those contrasts that are uh, that are quite lovely yeah, I, for me, I love it how Cyrus really, really cares about things. Like he just puts himself on the line every day. You know the episode where you turn you you you, you turn the table over and you rip your whole office apart. I just love how he's so emotional. Um, is that cathartic for you to play a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve? It is. Be because it's kind of married to someone who whose job and whose love of strategic politics uh, um, requires very situational like revelation, you know, mm -hmm. of the truth <clears throat> of, of, of this and that, and yet he's he feels like he's kind of run by his passions, which is. Great fun. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, you know, what I what I love about Scandal is it's so inclusive. It's, you know, the diversity of the cast. It's, I mean, this is talked about ad nauseum. You know, it has a lot of African-Americans, people from different nationalities. Um, it, it has gay characters. It, um, and it really doesn't make a big fuss about that in terms of informing them as a character. They're, you're not stereotypes is what I'm trying to say. I'd like to know how you feel about playing a gay character and how what what you've heard from other people or from, you know, just the public at large in terms of how you bring that to the screen. Um, Tennessee Williams has a beautiful quote, uh, nothing human disgusts me. Um, and to put it in more positive verbiage, you know, everything human fascinates me. Everything human yeah. um, is embraceable. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm pretty much wired for um, love and trying to figure people out. And once I know something about someone, I start to like and then love them. Uh, I think it's like most actors, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, 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 and and in simple pragmatic terms, I've been gay with my Steppenwolf theater mates, John Malkovich and Terry Kinney. And, you know, yeah. I played I played a lot of gay characters. Uh, um, people ask me at times whether the naked scene with my husband James played by a beautiful by Dan. Was that difficult? Well, I've kind of been in that situation a number of times on stage, yeah. and uh, and the writing is of such kind of depth and uh, moment. Uh, uh, it doesn't. Um, I kind of lost the fact that I was naked, as did as did Danny, you know, pretty quickly, and it was just this is a very interesting hard scene. Let's try to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I I do love uh, uh, I do love you know uh, Oprah had a rather beautiful quote that I can only paraphrase because I didn't memorize it, but just basically the Shonda, um, one of the facets of what makes her a beautiful writer is kind of everybody's got a seat at the table. Um, race, creed, sexual preference, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, uh, political affiliation, all of it. And, um, and she's uh, very inclusive. And, and I do love the simultaneity of there are ways in which Kerry Washington is a black female lead um, and uh, is momentous continually throughout this time period and ways in which it is a moot point. Right. Well, this, who is this person? 
Mm-hmm. And I've forgotten about skin color and I've forgotten about sexual preference, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. It's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a, yeah. It's really, I mean, that's reality. And that's the beauty of scandal. I'm, Kerry actually explained it beautifully to me about three weeks ago when I spoke to her. And she said, you know, look, being a black woman informs a lot of who she is. Obviously, it, and you could you don't deny that, but it also what also informs her is that she's also just a human being. It's and that's what scandal does. That's reality. Like being an Australian informs me, but it's not like everything about who I am. And, and the same would go for you in terms of your background. So I, I love how Shonda does that. I love it how a network like ABC can put that on the air. It's not something that we just have to look to cable to do. What's it like working on network TV? You've got certain restrictions, but you're able to kind of get around it in certain ways by still being quite adult in the way that things are portrayed. Yeah, uh, you know, there's uh, um, cable TV, which I've been a massive fan of. Um, to me, borrowed the artistic breadth of its license and, in fact, its kind of beautiful economic model that is less beholden yeah. in numbers of dollars. Um, from not-for-profits, which I grew up with, uh, theaters, opera companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it's kind of like if you have a good idea and you have a known amount of uh, uh, people helping pay the bill, you may have $10 to the network's 100 mm-hmm. but you have beautiful artistic freedom. Yeah. Um, Shonda is as close uh, uh, as anyone in network TV to date, I think, to I'm going to, to the best of my ability, ignore that division Mm. um, and just create what I am passionate about, the adult fare that I care about. Mm -hmm. And... um, and she has a fair, I think she has a fair amount of standards and practices conversations uh, with network that don't happen at cable. Yeah. Uh, um, but but uh, but she's she's really making making that work. Well, yeah. 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 Hey. You know. Um You've been around for a long time. People, you've, you've got a very recognizable face. People know you from various projects that you've worked in. You've been lucky enough to work in film, obviously on stage, uh, where you've had a lot of your experience, and on TV. You know, I remember you from roles in The Practice and obviously Grey's Anatomy and Nash Bridges and, um, and now Scandal. Um, I'd like to know, because a lot of actors usually say that their first love is the theatre, and that's obviously... I can see why that would be, but I always want to know what is it about working on TV that you really love because there must be something about it. So many amazing actors are coming over to television these days. What is it about TV that you love? Carlton Cuse, who was uh, the writing producer of Nash Bridges, kind of clued me into something early in interaction with television which was, Jeff, you know, the creation of character is an ongoing thing in a TV series. And it is, to some extent, uh, very importantly, you know, what we create. And to another extent, what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And crucially, character uh, um, is... In very interestingly, this feels very unique to television. It's different from film and it is different from stage in that uh, uh, it is uh, an ongoing, almost present time discovery Mm. um, because of its serial form. Yeah. Uh, As an actor, I know the beginning and end of every play and film work that I've done Uh, and here I know uh, I I begin to know what's in the past and I know what's in the present and I don't know what's in the future and that's a beautiful uh, distinction Mm -hmm. for actors 
for TV work. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is, it, 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 it's kind of putting yourself into the unknown to a certain extent in a way that you, um, fundamentally can't, mm. uh, um, in a form that already, already knows it's beginning, middle and end. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So look, um, the first season of Scandal, seven episodes, uh, it did quite well, obviously. Um, it did, it wasn't on Emmy's radar. Obviously they just missed out, missed the boat. This season, it's really hit um, pay dirt. ABC is very happy with its performance, ratings, buzz, and all that. And there is a lot of talk that the Emmys might embrace it too. Now, if it does, if they do, we always ask this to our, to people that we interview, and you had to pick your highlight episode as a nominee. Let's just say, you know, I'm not going to jinx anything, but do you have a highlight episode from season two that you remember that you thought really encapsulates your character and your work on the show? Uh, um, if I have to pick one, I guess it would be episode 213. I think it's entitled Nobody Likes Babies. And it contains the kind of commercial break to commercial break, unbroken scene between James and I. Yeah. Um, where, and I remember writing Shonda about this, Robert, that, uh, I said, this is such a remarkable gift to us as actors. For me personally, as Cyrus, you've taken a man who's spent his entire adult life revealing only strategically what he must reveal. And these can be many various versions of truth and untruth. And he's being asked by the first, I'm in assumption, in made up actor backstory, the first true love of this life. And, and with the kind of pressure of, if you do not reveal to me who you are and what the actual truth is, uh, we can't go on. And so she, puts uh, uh, my situation cumulatively after uh, whatever, 13 plus 7, you know, 20 episodes, mm. um, kind of right, right into a vise of <laughs> what am I going to do? And, uh, and I tell him a truth I'm sure I've never uttered to anybody else. Yeah. And it's a beautiful task for an actor, and I think pretty thrilling for an audience who's invested in the in in the characters, you know. Yeah. So, I guess that'd have to be my favorite. I'm glad you said that, as I would have said the same thing. That's a really, really powerful, strong episode for you, you and Dan. And um, look, you never know what will happen. We we do wish you guys all the best. You and the rest of the cast have had so much fun chatting with the Scandal peeps. Um, good luck and uh, and have a great summer and hopefully we'll chat again soon in, in a few more months' time. Robert, the best to you, the best to Sydney, Australia. Uh, I got to be there courtesy of Kate Blanchett and Andrew at the Sydney Theatre Company yeah. with August Osage County and uh, I had never been to your town before and mm -hmm. oh, man, I loved it. I can't wait to get back.